this is Rex Rue here. Welcome back to another Banjo's Backpack tutorial series. Today we're going to be doing is going over how to create your very own custom Banjo-Kazooie level. Now, there's going to be quite a lot to cover in this video, so if by the end of it you do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, alright? So, with that said, let's go ahead and begin the tutorial. So, the first thing I want to do is link you guys to a thread here on the Rareware Central forums, created by Cool Boy Man, one of the co-creators of Banjo's Backpack, and he's compiled a nice list for us of various video game textures, one of them being Banjo-Kazooie. So, all you need to do is go ahead and just download this texture pack, if this page will load, there we go, and uh, this is the texture pack that we're going to be using for Banjo's Backpack, and it really is the texture pack that you should use for Banjo's Backpack as well, because all the sizings and whatnot of the textures are, for the most part, correct. So, yeah, this is a great texture pack to use. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and now head into Google SketchUp and get started actually modeling our level. Alright, so before we actually get into SketchUp and start designing our level, there's one little thing that I'd like to note. And that is, for those of you who have never opened up SketchUp before, one thing that I'd like to do is go to Choose Template and choose Architectural Design Feet and Inches. And the reason why I like to do this is because in Banjo's backpack, Banjo is about an inch or so tall. So by using this unit of measurement, you can sort of gauge how big your map is compared to Banjo. So, once you've done that, just go ahead and hit Start Using SketchUp and we'll be good to go. Well, here we are. Google SketchUp. This is where the magic happens. Well, most of it anyways. So basically, there is something a little off here, I'm sure as a lot of you guys are wondering, especially those of you who have never used SketchUp before. Because when you hit start using SketchUp, this is not what you should see. This amazing, awesome looking map. Okay, maybe I'm kidding about the amazing and awesome part, but this map nonetheless is not necessarily what you should see, but rather, something like this. Now, the reason why I actually brought this map up is because basically this is what we're going to be creating today, and because I don't necessarily want to make this a, well, tutorial on how to use SketchUp, but rather how to use SketchUp with Banjo's backpack, how to correctly make maps and whatnot, I essentially want to show you guys this map, and then go in Google SketchUp, and then create the map, and then just basically have you guys follow along using the tools and whatnot that I use. Because in Google SketchUp, for those of you, again, who have never used the program before, it is a very simple program, for the most part, very easy to get a hang of. All of these tools are the only tools that SketchUp has to offer. And what I'd like to do now is just quickly go over these tools and some sort of tips and tricks that I've used on this model here, and then go into Google SketchUp on that blank slate, create the map, and do post commentary while I'm creating it, and just kind of give you some pieces of information. Um, that I think are necessary whilst creating the map. So, anyways, that's what I'm going to like to do. So, again, if you have any co uh, questions by the end of the video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and really quickly go over some of these tools for how I uh, created some of these things here, and then let's get to the building. So, uh, to create this here, um, I've used a tool called the Offset Tool, which is right here. And essentially what it does, if you create anywhere on a face, or click anywhere on a face rather, it will create the same exact shape within that shape. Alright, but you'll notice that I haven't gotten this shape by creating this in the Offset Tool. Now, the reason why that is, is because I need to click and drag out some of these points. So, to do that, I can go over here to my Move Tool, click on the edge, and... Oh my goodness, that's not what we want. We want actually to drag these out, right? So, what can we do here? Well, we can go over here to our line tool here, and go to the midpoint of our square, which is basically if you go along the edge a little bit, it will snap to the middle eventually, and that's your midpoint. And I can click, and I can just drag up to create a simple line. And now, if I choose my move tool, oh, there we go, we can now drag out and create a ex sort of an extruded point, I suppose. Now, also another thing to note is when I move this, you'll notice that it sort of snaps to a exactly 16 by 16 of visible grid. Now, how I did that was I went to Window, Model Info, Units, Enable Length Snapping, and just type in 16. Alright, and that is how you create snapping. And this can be used for all sorts of things. Uh, mainly, I just use it for symmetrical purposes. Alright, so I'm obviously going to go ahead and just kind of go over that a little bit. And now I can go ahead and just click and drag out all 
of these points. Now, how I created that little extrusion there is again, I just use the offset tool and use something called the push and pull tool. All right, and the push and pull tool is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It pushes and it pulls. So that's that. And then how I created the slants are in SketchUp, when you connect a point to another point and you have two of those different points connected that are next to each other, you can create a face, like so. All right, so that's how I created my face. Now we did it all the way around. We'll be getting more into that once I actually get into the actual modeling of the actual level from scratch. And then finally, the last thing I just want to do is sort of extrusion upward, because this is going to be sort of tricky in Google SketchUp. Now, how you do an extruded line upward is you simply click on a point anywhere on your face and uh, just kind of move your mouse around a little bit until you finally get on the blue axis. And that right there, once you see it's blue, click, and you now have an extruded point. It kind of goes upward. All right, so that is how everything works. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this now, head into the blank slate of Google SketchUp, and uh, start modeling this level. So you can sort of follow along with that, and you should be good to go for the most part. You've, you've basically got the tools down that you need. Um, oh, I guess really quickly I should mention one thing. How you move around Google SketchUp is up here is the pan. You can kind of pan sort of a, a 2D view, I suppose. And then next to that is the orbit, which you can just sort of orbit around in 3D space. And then scroll wheel is in and out. All right, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and finally get into modeling of this level. <laughs> So when you're finally done with your model, the last thing to do is go ahead and export it so that we can take it into Banjo's backpack. Now, there's two different things here that I want to sort of differentiate. Saving and exporting. Now, saving, if you were to save your map right now, if you were to go save, and then, well, I guess in my case, be save as. Uh, we can name it BB Tutorial Map for Banjo's backpack, obviously. All right, Tutorial Map. This would save it as a SketchUp file, so it would basically be if we wanted to take it back into SketchUp and make some edits. But what we want to do if we want to take it into Banjo's backpack is export it. So we'd go to Plugins, OBJ Exporter, and Browse, 
And then, obviously, I'm in the same exact folder that I'm in, which is why you can see all this stuff already. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and name it BB Tutorial Map. And then I'll also put Object, just so I know that it's an OBJ file. Okay, and make sure that you have these two options here ticked, uh, the Guess Which Faces to Export and the UV Helper. And then, once you've done that, go ahead and export OBJ file, and it should say Exported, and there you go. Alright, so now we can go ahead and head into Banjo's Backpack and take this in there and start doing stuff there. Alright, so now that we're in Banjo's Backpack, we can go ahead and go to the Tool option and OBJ Importer to import our custom level. So what we're going to do in here is go to File, Import OBJ, and I'm just going to go and type in BB Tutorial Map, actually, unless it, there we go. It actually shows up right here, there's no reason to search for it. Alright, so we're just going to open our custom level here. And here we go. Now, one thing to note is when you take your models within Banjo's Backpack, your textures get flipped. And I don't know why this is, but they just do. And to fix this, you want to go down here to Flip Textures Vertically. Now, another thing that might happen is when you take your textures, or excuse me, your models in here, um, your textures might look a little skewed in places. And the reason for that is because... Uh, the processing is just too much on a face for a certain texture, which is why in the beginning when I was modeling this, I made those certain divisions in my face. So if you have more weird texture skewing, just go ahead and make some little simple divisions here, make a square in a face or whatever, just so there's less to process on one face and see if that helps. All right, so what we're going to do now is go over the texture overlaying. I think that's a good place to start here. So to get the texture overlay, what we want to do is change our alpha over here to zero and keep uh, update vert checked. All right, and we're going to right click just on the beginning of some of these newly created triangles. All right, and there we go. And as you can see, we're starting to get this sort of nice little overlay. We can see the beginning of the grass kind of just changing over to that dirt. And that's why we can kind of see the very bottom of that. Now, one thing that I also didn't really mention, but I'm going to mention now, is when you actually are doing texture overlaying, you want to make sure to actually have these areas filled in instead of just having gaps right here, like, you know, fill in the faces with what they're supposed to be. So I'd probably at the midpoint of here uh, create a little face and then make it so on the side right here, the side panel, it'd be my grass, and then on this side panel, it would be my dirt. And then also, for the uh, face that you would create right in the beginning of here, make sure that on the opposite side, so down here, it would show the dirt, because obviously you're fading into the dirt, so when you kind of look from afar down here, you would see dirt down there. Alright, so that is how to do texture fading. Now, the last thing I want to do, or do, excuse me, is go over the water. Now, the water is kind of weird in that you actually have to, like when we were texturing it, fill in both sides of the face. So what we're going to do is go to Alpha, change that to about 75, and over here are all your collision options. So we have collision types, we have ground type, and we also have sound type, which are basically if you click using one of these on a face, um, it will change what sound it makes when you walk over it. Alright, but for now we're just going to go and mess with collision type and choose water. Alright, and I'm just going to go ahead and go over to update triangle, so it updates the entire triangle, and simply click on these faces. Alright, and then do the same for the underneath side. There we go. And there we go. Alright, so I believe, just going to make sure here that that's all our faces. Alright, and it looks like it is. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and uh, also, I guess really quick, you can also move Banjo kind of rotate him if you check that on so that's that <laughs> so once you're done go ahead and hit file and save alright I'm just gonna go and overwrite my previous one I just did a test to make sure it all worked alright I'm just gonna save it as a simple bin file and also renamed it level just so I know that it is a separate bin file alright and hit save already exists okay overwrite it and was successfully created there we go very nice alright we can exit out of this and go into actual Pandora's backpack again now what we're going to do is go to file open setup file from ROM and we're going to choose one of these already here levels and overwrite it with our current level so I'm just going to go ahead and choose something that I already haven't overwrited so let's go mad monster mansion again and I'm going to start off by clearing all the objects okay and our current uh, start position is set at 0, 0, which is good. We'll go ahead and move that a little later. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead to replace model and choose base level. And this is just going to be our first uh, bin, not our alpha bin. We'll get to the alpha bin in just a sec. Hit open. And then over here where it says alpha slash water bin, or I guess level, we'll go ahead and choose our alpha one. 
Alright, now you won't always have to do this if you don't have any water in your game, but in this case we do, so we're just going to choose that, and then just go ahead and hit update, and here we go. This is our nice little custom level. Now, just to make it a little more nicer, I'm going to just create a simple object just to show that we can add already existing Banjo-Kazooie objects within our levels. So, let's see, let's go and add a global, uh, let's see... Um, I just get, I guess I'll just go and add something like a, uh, I think it's an enemies beehive. There we go. All right, and I'll go to select mode, and we should have, or you should already know how to do this because we went over it in the last tutorial. All right, we'll rotate a little bit, and we'll scale it down just a bit. With we'll right click, and there we go. Very nice. All right, and finally, we want to go ahead and go to option set start level. And we're going to go and set the level that we're currently on, which is Mad Monster Mansion. So it starts off at our custom level. There we go. And then also, you have all these other options, which I'm not really going to get into, but uh, basically you can just kind of mess with these and see what they do. Uh, renaming levels, obviously renames levels. Skybox, um, I guess I'll just go and show you this really quick. Uh, so if we want to change the sky on this level, we'd go to Mad Monster Mansion, right there, and then we can change the sky for it, uh, both Sky 1 and 2. Uh, let's go and change this to Rusty Bucket Bay. There we go. Alright, and we can hit Update ROM, and there we go. So finally, we want to go and hit Save to ROM, and change the save successfully. Very nice. So we'll go and open up our emulator that we have here, which for me I'm using Project 64. File, open ROM, and Banjo-Kazooie. Alright, and it should open. There we go. And it should automatically start us off at our custom level. And here we are. Very cool. Which, oops, I just realized I forgot to set our custom level or our custom start point. Um, basically, it's the same thing as just selecting objects. Uh, there's that little start point right over. Let me show you guys really quick. OBJ importer. Let's go to. Never mind. I just realized that's not the area I want to go to. All right, silly me. So let's go to clear all objects. All right, and there's the start point. By automatic or by default, excuse me, it is selected. So it's right over here. We can, we can just go to move and move it there. And that's where we'll start off our level. So that's how to change your start position. But anyway, back to here. So here's our level, and I've changed the skybox, so it's that of Rusty Bucket Bay, as you can see. And here we go. This is our level. We can nice kind of walk around. We can swim a little bit in our water. And everything works there. And there's our little honeycomb guy, and here is our nice little texture fading. And that, guys, is how to create your very own custom Banjo-Kazooie levels within Banjo's Backpack. My apologies for some of the uh, mistakes made in this video. I'm kind of tired, and I'm trying to actually get this video out a couple of times, but things have happened. You know, I've been sick, whatever, and it just didn't work out. So this is the best that I could do. Hopefully it helps you. And if you do, again, have any questions and or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So with that... All said, this has been Rex Furry, and as always, till next time, this has been, or, well, kind of messed that up, but, uh, till next video, I'll see you all then.